Now let's look at some of the more advanced features that you can use for a sizing measurement. If you navigate back to the measurement tab, we can look at other advanced settings for sizing. Let's look at other cell types that might be available and the advantages or disadvantages of using them. In general, for sizing measurements, most people use disposable cells. This eliminates cross-contamination between samples, there is no required cleaning, they are one-time use and throw away. These would be the disposable plastic cells that I've mentioned before. The other types of cells that can be used that are disposable for sizing measurements are the folded capillary cells such as the DTS 1070. Now these are a bit more expensive than the regular disposable cells, but the advantage here is that you can do both sizing and zeta potential measurements in the same cell if you choose. The disadvantage of possibly using a disposable folded capillary cell for a sizing measurement, you would like to make sure the sample is optically clear. If not, and you're using a sample that's slightly opaque, you would get much better quality data in one of the other sizing cells. Now let's say you're using a sample that's not compatible with plastic, such as polycarbonate or polystyrene, then you might want to use one of the glass cuvettes, such as the PCS 8501. These are reusable, can be cleaned, and are compatible with many organic solvents. If you don't have enough volume of sample to fill one of the glass cuvettes, you may consider a quartz cuvette, which is more expensive in price, but can go down to very low volumes such as 12 microliters. The glass and quartz cuvettes are also used for higher quality measurements, such as concentration or molecular weight analysis. The last cell I'll mention is the capillary cell. This cell can use as little as 2 microliters, and it's really good at measuring particles that are very large in size, maybe in the micron range. Now let's look at some of the other processing and advanced features that you have as options for SOPs. For the analysis model, there are several here. You'll see the general purpose, multiple narrow modes, and L-curve analysis. This is from most conservative to more aggressive treatment of noise within your correlation data. It's advised to generally start with a general purpose model. This can also be edited later if you see that your sample has multiple populations. Changing it to the multiple narrow modes will just give you a little bit higher resolution data by changing this algorithm. On the advanced settings, this is where you can change the scattering angle that you'd like to measure at, uh, depending on the type of cell that you have selected here. For example, right now I have this special capillary cell selected that can only be used at 90 degrees or side scattering, so the instrument won't allow me to change the measurement angle. However, if I have another cell selected, such as the regular disposable cell, I have many options on a Zeta Sizer Ultra to change to the three different measurement positions. If you have the Pro, you will not have the side scattering as an option. Typically, you would use the back scattering angle, which is suitable for a wide variety of different concentrations for your sample. If you are particularly interested in very low levels of very large particles, you may consider using the forward scattering angle, which will be very sensitive to things like aggregation or small populations of large size within your sample. The measurement position, typically you would use measure at the optimal position first when measuring your sample. Later, if you're in a QC environment or measuring the exact same sample type, you could actually fix this so that every single sample is measured the exact same way in the same position. What you'll need to do is make sure that if you do that, you're using the exact same concentration range for all your measurements. For the attenuation, this is a laser attenuation. So we have a filter that we are changing the power of the laser that we're using for your measurement to optimize the count rate for our detector for the highest sensitivity of measurement. We highly recommend using only automatic here and not using manual. This is to prevent damage to your detector by accidentally overwhelming the detector during the measurement by using a manual setting. The measurement process it's generally 
set to automatic, but can be fixed down to a manual process. If you have already found the optimal measurement conditions using the automatic settings, you can simply lock these down to manual. You can insert a pause after your sub runs, or you can use an optical filter. You have three different options here with both the pro and ultra model, a fluorescence filter, horizontal polarizer, and vertical polarizer. The fluorescence filter would be used for samples that might absorb in the wavelength near the wavelength of the instrument. The polarizers might be used for identifying multiple scattering effects and eliminating them, or for non-spherical particles. You can also choose to put a pause in between repeat measurements if you would like a little pause between your triplicate runs. Now let's say you're interested in making some of these changes to your method and seeing how that affects the results. That's really easy with the software to duplicate a sizing measurement of the current settings and then making a change such as to the angle of measurement. Now you'll see that you have a measurement at back scattering and then another measurement at forward scattering where you can directly compare results. 